When you realize how fast time is going, it should bring a sense of urgency, a sense of focus. Your assignment has an expiration date. Your time on this earth is not unlimited. God is saying to you, your hour has come. If you're going to reach your highest potential, you have to do like Jesus and set your face. You can't be distracted by things that are keeping you from your purpose. You don't have time to waste worried about what people think about you. Your time is too valuable to respond to every critic, every negative comment, try to convince people that you really are okay. Those are distractions. Everyone is not going to like you. Everyone's not going to accept you. Quit trying to convince someone to understand you that's determined to misunderstand you. Some people don't want to be for you, and that's okay. You don't need them to fulfill your destiny. You have to set your face. The people that need to be for you will be for you. God has already lined up the right people. People that will celebrate you. People that will cheer you on. People that stick with you through thick and thin. Now don't waste another minute trying to convince someone to like you, to call you, to come see you. If you have to talk them into it, they are not for you. They are a distraction. I know people that spend more time worried about what other people think about them than they do pursuing their own dreams and goals. Life is too short to try to have peace with people that don't want to have peace with you. It takes discipline to say, I am not going to respond, not going to waste my valuable time. I have a destiny to fulfill. My hour has come. Proverbs says, avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. God don't like you to surround yourself with people, things, and situations that's going to stop you from reaching the level of success that God has destined you and your career to get to. That's why God gave us free will. God gave us a choice. Loyalty has an expiration date. The problem is, it's when you're the nice person, your loyalty lasts far longer to certain people than it should because their loyalty to you has been expired. But you being a good person, you hang on to friendships and become forgiving far longer than you really should be. Loyalty has an expiration date. I want to talk to you today about connecting with the right people. Your destiny is too big to get there on your own. God has already arranged certain people to speak faith into you. He's placed in your path people to inspire you, to help you grow and accomplish your dreams. But the reason some people never reach their highest potential is because they never get away from the wrong people. Which means that if God has destined your life to get from here to where it's destined to be, you're carrying dead weight. Your boat is either going to sink or God has destined your life and your career to get to the ultimate blessings and the goals and where you're supposed to be. Because you got all this dead weight, you're operating over your capacity. It's going to take you that much longer to get there. You've got to connect with people that understand your destiny. People that appreciate your uniqueness. People that can call forth your seeds of greatness. Not people that are always pushing you down, telling you what you can't become never giving you their approval, no matter how good you do. Life is too short to drag people along. If you will get the wrong people out of your life, then God will bring the right people into your life. Don't be confused. Don't search for reasons. It's the universe. Don't come up with abstract ideas as to why your life is where it is. Bad company corrupts good character. And if your character is corrupted, it doesn't matter how talented you are, when push comes to shove, you will not last and you will not fulfill the mission God has for your life. And the best way to get good character is to remove bad company. Somebody say, check your circle. If you don't know your starting point, friend, you're never going to get to your end point. And so we're being honest and we're being vulnerable. And we're looking within and saying, who am I really? And Tozer would say to you and I, you want to know who you are? Just check the circle of your friends. 
where God has destined your life and your career to be and go. You cannot get there with all of the people that you've showed up with because your boat is at its capacity. If the boat is at 1,500 and because you're loyal, you have your boat now at 4,000 pounds in capacity. You are now on a boat that has blessings and opportunities, but it's, it's overweight. It's past its capacity. Some of you, the only thing that's holding you back is your inner circle. The people that are closest to you, they're with you, but they're not really for you. You're constantly having to persuade them that you're okay and convince them to get on board. You're spending all your time and energy on someone that doesn't understand your destiny. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your co-workers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter what your children think. It don't matter. They have nothing to do with it. This decision is yours and yours alone. You get to decide. Let me tell you something. You get to decide if I'm going to be rich, poor, mediocre, happy, sad. You, you have a decision to make. As you grow up and get older, you start realizing what actually makes sense for your life and what don't make sense for your life. Because I grew up with my brothers and sisters doesn't mean that we're actually going to walk in the same path. Because I have my friends that I grew up with doesn't mean that we're going to move and walk and have our lives, family, mind state, career choice, the way we think, the way we move, moving in the same direction. You should understand this, that it was always going to be your family and your friends that would be the first ones to try and talk you out of your vision and your big idea. That's why you're supposed to live your life. Focus on your intentions and do your thing. If I had paid attention to what people thought I was going to do with my life and what my career path would be, I would not be Tyrese Gibson. Character is self-imposed discipline. For the sake of moral convictions, self-imposed discipline. That means a person of character doesn't need the police. They police themselves. A person of character locks themselves up in the prison of their own convictions and they throw away the key. Some of y'all are loyal. I have this power struggle with this concept called loyalty. You're so loyal. You're watching your career and your life and your surroundings crash and burn because you're being loyal to those friends. They're insecure and threatened by you and anything that you do and any move that you make. They are angry, mad, and jealous and envious about anything that you have going. You hold on to things that don't make sense for the new season of your life, but because you actually know because you're comfortable with it. You hold on to dead weight. People are in your life for a reason. Other people are there for a season. But it's important to recognize when people's seasons are over. Now, keeping in mind our idea that a courageous person is not someone who never feels fear, but who fears the right thing at the right time in the right way. What really scares people about these situations is the sense that they're going to be helpless, that all their trust was placed in somebody or something, and now they've been let down and they can't do anything. They're helpless. Take your place, make your mark, and live your life. God didn't bring you in this world to wake up and die one day and just be another person that lived and died and didn't do anything significant in this world. You're still alive. So therefore, God is not done with you. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. But you have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. It's, it's everything. It's working out, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. It's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about having the discipline to control your ego so your ego doesn't get out of hand and control you. 
character is sacrifice for principles. So character means you are willing to sacrifice friendship to protect your principles. You are willing to lose your best friend in order to keep your principles. The first challenge is for us to find ourselves. And we find ourselves when we discover our purpose. Find that purpose. It's what makes you solid. It's what makes you secure. It's, it's your mooring. It, it keeps you just exactly where you need to be so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. And so I think that now more than ever, we must begin to look at what are the things that we can do that will enable us to do some things and, and use some powers that we have that many of us go through life never ever discovering that we have those things going for us. And part of that, I believe, is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? A truly confident person's belief in himself is strong enough so that he's able to believe in others. Distrust in yourself breeds distrust in everyone you meet. A confident person gives you confidence. She creates confidence in others. The strength of her character makes you a stronger character. Do you have character? Who are you with right now that you shouldn't be with? Think about it. Society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win. To just divert your focus and attention. Look over here. Look at this shiny thing. Worry about what's going on here in this war. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives that just get us distracted so we never get obsessed. We never get laser focused. Ask yourself truthfully, your big goals and dreams, are you really clear on what they are? Because if you don't have that, we can't even get started. Other people will often see how God shaped you before you do. Because when you're naturally good at something, you think everybody's good at it. They're not. And when you're good at something, you just think it's a normal thing. Well, anybody should be able to do that. Well, they, they don't. And so other people will actually have to point it out in you. Integrity is the foundation that a successful life is built on. You can have talent, determination, but without integrity, you won't reach your highest potential. A person of integrity does the right thing when no one is watching. They give it their best whether anyone is there or not. When the temptations outweigh the benefits, that's all it takes for some very unfortunate things to start happening. In my opinion, and I think there are very few exceptions to this, a bad person is simply somebody who doesn't have enough reasons to be good. Fear kills hope. Fear. Put people in the hospital. Fear can age you. Can hold you back from doing something that you know within yourself that you're capable of doing, but it will paralyze you. And I ask you a question, what is the benefit? of giving up on yourself, of not stepping out on life and taking life on. What is the benefit for you? What's the plus in that? And so ask yourself what you're willing to risk. What's the price you're willing to pay? Because what most people do when they're trying to chase their dream or their big outcome, the whole time they're negotiating the price in their head. Should I continue to do it? Is it worth it? I don't know if I can continue anymore. It's getting higher and that price is failure. And what happens is, if you don't negotiate that price in advance, it's going to steal your focus and energy and become another distraction. When you find your spiritual gift, all of a sudden it'll give you an energy that when you're in the area of your weaknesses, you get tired, don't you? But when you're in the area of your strengths, you're energized. Well, Joel, I've always been kind of negative, critical, condescending. That's just who I am. No, that's who you're choosing to be. That's not who you are. Try being kind, friendly, good nature. You'll not only enjoy life more, but you'll go further. Decide to develop the habit right now. The habit of focusing on what's right in your world instead of what's wrong. The habit of focusing on what you do have instead of what you don't have in a situation. Because those habits form the chain of your ultimate character, of who you become and how you end up living your life. We've got to condition ourselves, because if we don't, we'll go back to the automatic state that most people live in in today's society. Wisdom is a unique commodity, if indeed it can even be called a commodity. Unlike the other things people hunger for, wisdom is very hard to visualize. Books aren't wisdom, they're just pieces of paper bound together. Books can help create wisdom in people's minds, 
But if you look inside their heads, you won't find any wisdom there.